the Bible tells us that in a great house there are not just vessels of silver and gold but of hay wood and stubble and it says of vessels under honor and vessels under dishonor then the Bible says if a man separate himself from these he will be a vessel under honor meet for the master's use and prepared for every good work listen to what I'm telling you there is a group of Christians that walk out of church empty and frustrated the greatest delight of my life was that this Sunday morning I got to speak at Canyon Hills to an excited church a church that's on fire that's feeding the poor and they are not alone in being a great church there are many great churches but there is a deep abiding rejection of commercial Christianity going on right now the people are saying I'm not content to be entertained I want to feel God I want to I want somebody to preach the Word of God to me somebody help me right now I want I want someone to get me free of arrogance of pride of carnality I'm up to here with preachers that don't know the difference between sin and truth and I'm going to direct my attention to all of you who are in this room that need to be set free of a habit that need to be set free of the fear the rage and the anxiety of the world that we're in and for that I'm going to read some a few verses so please look this way it says in Genesis 32 verse 24 then Jacob was left alone many of you in this room suffer from a loneliness that you feel even when you're around people you can be around friends and feel alone you nurse the opinion that if something bad ever really happened to you there would be no one there to help you there's no safety net for you not in this culture and the older you get the more real that gets and the Bible says then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him there wasn't just a man it was God until the break of day now when he saw that he did not prevail against him he touched the strongest joint in the human body right here where the femur and the hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day breaks but he said I will not let you go unless you bless me so he said to him what is your name he said Jacob and he said your name no longer will be called Jacob but Israel for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed everybody stop I gotta do this I gotta do this right now I gotta look at you you are not getting yet the emotional charge on this story and how you are in this story if you were raised in the inner city if you were raised poor if you were raised in a broken family you're going to instantly relate with everything I'm saying right now Jacob felt like an illegitimate child he felt like he had no genuine value as a human being his name meant con artist he had a name that said I'm a con artist there's nothing valid about me there's nothing legitimate about me all my life I wish I could be a valid person a real dignified either a man or a woman of means of reputation of value but then the system chews you up and spit you out and what happened all of a sudden 
And you need to know this about Christianity. You have no idea how inadequate I feel right now. You need to know this about Christianity. When Jesus comes into a room, suddenly fear is replaced by love. Guilt is replaced by purity. Insecurity becomes boldness. You belong. You know you're somebody. The scream of your heart, the cry of your life is one profound thing. I wish I was somebody. I don't know who I am. I wish I was somebody. And God walked by. And Jacob knew it was God. He knew his moment had arrived. It's either now or never. I'm going to grab a hold of God and say, God, change me. Make me something I've never been before. Make my life a value. Look. That woman that I saw in the video at Canyon Hills, I couldn't get past when she said, I never had hope. I never believed I would stop doing drugs and alcohol. I never believed. I never believed that there would come a day when what I really wanted out of life would happen to me. Then she said, these people showed me love. These people took the time. But you know what happened to her? She grabbed it. She grabbed the gospel. I'm going to stop right here because I, I wish I was at it. She grabbed the gospel because she said, this will work. This is what will change me. This is where the alcohol finally leaves me alone. And I'm no longer going to be an object of some man's lust. But I'm going to be a daughter of a king with purity and innocence again. Is anybody getting this? So Jacob grabbed God. Jacob grabbed God. This is my chance to no longer be a con artist, an afterthought, a cruel joke, somebody else's slave. This is my chance to find my real identity, who I really am. So he grabbed God and God said, let me go. And he said, no, no, no. I will never let you go until you bless me. Until you bless me, I'm not letting go. So how, how is it that God couldn't break his hold? How is it that God had the power to dislocate his hip but not break his grip? Because the one thing that God cannot resist is the cry of one of his children. He can't resist it. I'm going here. He can't resist it. If nothing grips God. You want to put a hammerlock on God? You cry to the Lord. In Psalm 34, verse 6, it says, This poor man cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. 